Hey guys, we're out in the Badlands again here, so not a whole lot for buffalo. It's windy, it's cold, it's like 47 degrees here. Quite a bit different from uh, when uh, we were here last time. It was like 105 degrees, so now anyway. It's really cold out. Yeah, it's cold and windy, so anyway, we're gonna take a look around here and just see what we can find. Lots of buffalo sign, but not really a whole lot of buffalo. It's like most of their sea is not to be around. Yeah, they don't want to be around us today. <laughs> Well, it was great to be back in the Badlands, but this was pretty much just an overnight pit stop. We stayed at the rough campground, and when we woke up the next morning, it was cold and chilly and windy. But that didn't stop us from doing a little bit of hiking. And we did see bison, but not nearly as many as we saw on our last trip. Most of the bison we saw were pretty far off in the distance, but we did find a few up near the road. But we didn't have a whole lot of time to mess around. We had gotten an invitation from Chad Kremer over at Kremer Buffalo to come and check out their operation. So pretty soon we were back on the road, heading for an area about 75 miles west of our current location, just outside the Custer State Park. Custer State Park is the state's largest state park. It was also their first state park. It's located in the southwest portion of the state and covers about 71,000 acres. In 1914, 36 bison were brought to the park in an effort to help restore the bison population. Today, the park is home to about 1,500 head of bison. We got into the area of Kramer Bison a little bit early, so Chad recommended we go check out the Bison Visitor Center down the road. They just had their 2023 roundup and the corrals were full of surplus animals that they were gonna auction off. So we decided to check it out. It was really an interesting place. It smelled like fresh cut pine when we first walked in, and it had a lot of interactive displays to teach people about bison and their habitat. Yeah, go ahead and demonstrate for us. Nikolai had a lot of fun exploring, but he found some of the interactions weren't exactly easy. Be careful. Oh. You're, yeah, you kind of suck at that. By mid-afternoon, the temperature had gone from sweatshirt chilly to t-shirt warm. It was still pretty windy, but a lot better than it had been when we first started out that morning. And pretty soon it was time to head off to Kramer Buffalo. Okay, folks, well, we're on Anik with the Black Axe Ranch, but we're not on the Black Axe Ranch. We're out here at uh, Kramer Buffalo here with Chad Kramer. Thank you for uh, yeah. having us come out. Bad, so uh, so we are just outside of Custer State Park here, uh, and uh, you you actually manage their animals, yep. but you also manage your own, and you got others, and you're managing. So can you... Yep. Can you tell us a little bit about like how you got started? How you got it? Uh, how did you all start here? Yep. So I've been, uh, yeah, I've been the herd manager at Custer Park for just over 22 years now. And that's how we ended up in the area here in the Black Hills. So, um, been raising bison for a little over 30 total. So how many how many animals then are you managing all all together? So at the park we will run up to 1,500 um, at the roundup with calves in the fall. Um, and then we downsize that to about 960 is what our normal or overwinter number is. Um, and that depends on precipitation and forage conditions each year. So we get into drought periods, like I've seen a couple times over the years, we'll, we'll downsize it. And then when we start getting moisture and, and the grass comes back, we'll get it back up to, to our capacity. But we manage it uh, for what we have for forage. 
and that's kind of what I've done here on uh, my own operation here I'm building that up in the last 20 years so I lease uh, two main ranches and a couple other smaller properties and run about 1800 acres and kind of learn like you're getting started learn things as we went you know what yeah. what worked what didn't so I don't supplemental feed um, we do we gave them some alfalfa cubes I do that just mm. more as a treat and that's yeah. how it's an aid to move them yeah. rather than chasing them. Treat, um, treat time. So it's just yeah. treat. You know, I can take a bucket of cubes out there, open the gate when it's time to go to the next pasture and yell for them and they come and a couple minutes they're all through the gate and close the gate behind them. And we just worked uh, the herd here yesterday. You know, the afternoon before I brought them in, brought them across the road in the trap here and then I was getting things ready. I just, I had a bunch of hay rolled out in the corral for them, grabbed a bucket shook the cube some of them came in i just went about getting things ready and watched and lock some up and wait a little while and you always have that little bunch at the end that gets really wise to it and they're just the ones that are more skittish and mm -hmm. so i ended up having to push them in with the atv but you know got them all in the night before let them settle down overnight and then it took us a little over two hours we got through right at 100 heads sure, so sure, sure. You know, interesting well, we're going to go take a look at some of these animals here and uh, hopefully get uh, put the eye in the sky a little bit and see some of that as well. So, uh, and we'll take Nikolai with too, maybe. Yeah. Or should we leave him here? Yeah. Yeah, we'll take him. We'll go. Sh All right. Show him some South Dakota buffalo. There you go. You want to go see some bobs? Yeah. All right. Let's go do it. But like you know, I got started, I started with the manual. Um, actually, our first 15, 20 years ago got started here. My other landlord next door here there's a corral just down the road i rebuilt that about always always upgrading always yep. modifying always trying yep. new things what goes yep. in there? yeah what's that what goes in there so well, the buffalo come in there let's go to the other side yeah all you. right so here's the controls for back here there's yep. a gate here and a gate there okay so they can so you can open up these side gates any yep any way along the Yep, they'll slide out this way. It's a little okay. easier to see. It's not sheeted as high on this side. Oh, I see. So yeah, we bring them from the big holding pin out back, cut out two or three in there, and then they come around this corner. Okay. Did you give them a shot or something? So then we okay. go in here, and then this gate opens up. And then they can step into this box. Yeah, okay. And then we try to get it where we just have one go into here. One right in there. And then they go into the squeeze chute. And so you, we, will you have one in there while you've got one working? Yeah, or that's the one that, that you yep. can? Okay. Yep. And well, what do you do with them once they're in the squeeze chute? Like? So like we yesterday we had the cows. We pregnancy tested them. We had a veterinarian here, so she pregnancy tested them, and we got a weight. It has a scale underneath it, oh, it so does. we can okay. get a weight on them. So we know their weight from year to year, and then they got vaccinations. So are those yearly vaccinations every year, or just kind of yeah? Hit a I do right age? now. I do an annual, okay. just an annual on them, and that's because I've been expanding the last five years. New so animals. bringing in some outside animals and stuff. Possible. Um, Carrying something. Maybe. I have in the past when I've been more established or not done vaccinations, just okay. wormer, depending on the year. So doing fecal monitoring and if they need a wormer, we'll give them a wormer. Is your wormer shot, pill, uh, usually, powder? I usually use an injectable. Injectable, okay. Shot. Yep. Once okay. in a while, a pour on. Because that's what our vet was talking about. But we don't have a handling facility, so she said, really that's your only choice on, yeah. yep yeah so okay I think it's just in there or well, you've been hanging around me too long you're picking up the lingo <laughs> <laughs> I, I yeah I, yeah he's 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 my interviewer i don't even have to ask questions he just yeah that's all you learn asking yeah. questions that's right, right? Buddy. but don't oh. you get stressed in there so. they get stressed in there oh yeah they can uh, yeah. That's why we try to do it as quick as we can, quick and efficient, so we can get them out of there. Yeah. We let them out, and like this time, we weren't sorting anything, so they all just went back to the pen. Okay. But next time, if I want to sort, I can sort 
over here, over to that pin. Okay, so you go. got, so kind of a central here, yep. but then whatever you need or... Yep, so I kind of came up with this idea oh, about 12, 15 years ago. So it's circular. Okay. It's basically about a hundred foot diameter circle. I all see the way it. around so now and it goes inside out. Okay. here is roughly 50. Foot. Okay. Um, so, and then but we'll bring them in. We got one big holding pin in the main corral back here. And we've got okay. an alleyway right along over here. Okay. So they can come from that big pin down into another one on the outside of the circle here. And then we bring them inside the circle. You asked about them stressing out. We want to keep them, we want to keep them moving. So we're always having to try when I'm done with one in the chute. We want another one ready so it's ready to jump in and we can just keep moving them through. I just get it done then. Yep, and then the we can one. let them back out. So mm -hmm. I made myself an alleyway. So then when we, we could sort two ways there. I got a pin here I can sort. And then uh, two more, well, three more pins if I need to. Okay. There, and then once my big holding pin is empty, we could actually sort that way. But usually three to five ways is about all we really need to so, sort. Where are all so. Where are they? Where are all the buffalo? Uh -huh. Should we go find them? Okay. Yeah. We'll go do that. Let's go find them there. Okay. That's what we need, huh, Nick? Yes. Yeah, that'd be a lot easier. <laughs> He's just a five year old. And they mature at about six, seven? About, yeah. The bull, about six or so. Yeah. And then they'll just keep growing, getting heavier. Okay. The oldest one I have, well, I've got one cow that's 19. 19. Bigger he weighs? Uh, we weighed him in July before we turned him out with the cows and he was 2420. 2420? Yep. Wow. Up there, Hey, spent the whole summer over there and then uh, just last Wednesday we worked them over there through the chutes and preg tested the cows and tagged the calves and, and then we loaded them up and brought them all back home. Throw some out to them too if you want, Nick. Yeah, go ahead, buddy. Yep. Yep, just throw him off there. He is, isn't he? He's got a big old head. He's the biggest one you have? Yep. That's what I was thinking. Yeah, he's the oldest. Well, I got one other one that's seven in that last bunch of bulls, but he's not near as big as this one. I was out here on the ATV the other night, gave him some cubes, he was sitting there and I was, so I was writing down, figuring out which calf went with, with which cow, so I was making notes, and all of a sudden I heard this, I turned 
turned around and he was right there. I could have touched him with his head and he was just sniffing me. Just sat there, yeah. Just sat there still and he looked and then he turned around and walked away. Treats on me though. How come some of them have like longer horns on one side and then shorter horns on the other? Oh, they most of them like that. They broke them off when they're like going through the chutes. And, like when they like stretch yep. out. So then I take care of all the ones in the park too. Yeah, where we just were. Yeah. So the big corral over there, we just worked the herd there two weeks ago. And then we've got our auction coming up here Number in two fourth. weeks. Yep. Yeah. Looking, looking for more treats. Yeah, that's all they care about. Yes, they do. Yeah. He's a big boy. Yeah, I like him. He's really deep in the chest. Yeah, and I mean, he's a, just muscled he's really neat, well. He's got a neat shape. Chuck their pumpkins in, yeah. Look at you, you're big, huh? Yeah. A treat. Who will eat? Well, it seemed like we barely got there and it was time to leave, but we had a great time. We learned a lot and we saw some amazing animals. Huge thank you to Chad and his family for letting us come out and take a tour of their ranch. And for more information, check out their website. They're also available on Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok. And if you haven't done so already, hit that little subscribe button down below. It helps show your support and it motivates us to make more videos. We'll see you guys next time.